Have you ever witnessed a couple making out in public and thought, get a room? Yes. yes. Well, a surprising new study found that the amount of affection between you and your partner may determine whether or not a marriage will last. And we're talking about public displays of affection. They found that couples who are overly affectionate from the start of their relationship may be more likely to divorce. <laughs> Join us via Skype to weigh in, board certified psychiatrist and co-host of Marriage Boot Camp on WeTV. Our friend, Ooh, Dr. Hi, Ish Dr. Major. Ish. We got your fans Hello. here today, Dr. Ish. <laughs> hi, Dr. Hi, Ish. So, look, you would think the opposite. You would think that couples early on that are more affectionate would have a better chance of making it through holy matrimony until death do them part. What's up with this? Yeah, you know, listen, if you don't know the difference between affection and true intimacy, I know a lot of divorced lawyers out there who will be more than happy to clear that up for you because that's what we're talking about here, right? Affection is that outward physical display. Intimacy is the emotional back and forth, and it's being vulnerable with your partner, and that's what happens when you sustain a long-term loving relationship. This study found out of the 168 folks and they followed them for over seven years, people who got divorced after seven years or more, when they first started out, Dr. B, they had this giddy, over-the-top, oh my God, I can't believe I'm so, I found this person here to be here, and that's not sustainable, right? We're talking about infatuation. It lasts from about three to six to nine months, and at that point in time, you've got a chemical soup of dopamine and serotonin and adrenaline just swirling around, and it literally looks like psychosis on a brain scan. That's why we say, I'm just crazy about this person. So I'm curious if this is more about early infatuation, maybe overly affectionate, how do you potentially compensate if you meet someone and maybe you are incredibly infatuated? That's okay, but you wanna make it long-term. What do you, how do you deal with that? Or maybe you meet someone, you really like them and they're overly affectionate with you in public. You like them, but you don't love that they're always draped over you. In order for us to grow together, the thing has got to match. These two things need to be somewhat the same. So here's how you can fix that problem. You sit down and you have a very honest, open conversation. Let's do some role play, guys. You say, listen, you sit down on the couch, turn off your phones, look each other in the eyes, and you say, I'm here with you. I'm claiming you at every opportunity. I know that we're together, and I don't care who else knows about it or what they may think. You are enough for me, and I'm a very reserved type person, and I'm going to reserve my affection for you for the times when we're alone. Are you okay with that? I love yeah. that. Yeah. And, that and I think, in general, well, men are more yeah. exhibitionists, that men maybe want to show that more in public, whereas women, not so much. So that's where that communication becomes very important. 100%, right? And so what this study found was that the effort, the affection, the appreciation, we know those things change on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. What you're able to sustain is the level of intimacy. I met a couple last week who've been married for 69 years. Wow. wow. And they said intimacy to us is when I fall asleep on the couch watching my favorite TV show, he comes by and gives me a blanket. That's intimacy. You can sustain that. I like that.